everybody welcome back to my Subaru it is so good to be back with you and today we continue our little mini series called live life loved and we are doing kind of a deep dive into Ephesians chapter 1 where Paul is laying a foundation for the rest of the book uh, and that foundation is is that we are in Christ 11 times Paul mentions that we are in Christ or in him and it is so vital as the as a Christian, as someone who has surrendered their life to Jesus, that we understand what it means to be in Christ. It is all about our identity, how we see ourselves, how we view who we are and whose we are. And so remember this whole thing is, is, is kind of based on Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 where it says be imitators of God that is how we are supposed to live our lives we are supposed to live out our lives out loud in the world the way Jesus would live but we do that not trying to earn God's favor not trying to perform for him not trying to appease an angry God but we are imitators of God as dearly loved children and the difference is vast and so we've looked at these identity markers. Uh, we've, we've looked at what it means to be blessed with every spiritual blessing. We've looked at what it means to be chosen by God. We've looked at what it means to be adopted into the beloved. And in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, Paul then says, In Him, that is in Christ, we have redemption. Redemption. What a beautiful, amazing, complex, nuanced word. Um... It goes on and it says that we have redemption through his blood. Now that's important. And I'll get back to that in a sec. But then it goes on and it says, and because we're redeemed, we have the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of God's grace. Now let's get back to this word redemption because it is one of those Christian words that kind of gets thrown around uh, and I think it's lost some of its teeth when it comes to having an impact in our souls and how we live our lives. Let me give you the technical definition of redemption. Redemption means to buy or win back. It means to free from captivity by payment or ransom. It means to release from blame or debt, to free from consequence, to rescue. Uh, and maybe what will help is that we uh, take a, a journey way back to the beginning of the Bible and look at what happened at the beginning. Yeah. Most of you know the story of Adam and Eve and God created the universe. He created the world and everything that he created was good. When he created Adam and Eve, it says that in his image, his Imago Dei, literally, he created Adam and Eve. And so they are perfect images of God. And the only condition that they had, the only rule that they had uh, was to not eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I won't get into all what that means right now, but you know the story. They took the fruit, they ate it. Suddenly their eyes were open and suddenly the Bible says that they realized, they recognized that they were naked. You go back to chapter 2, and the very last verse of that chapter says that they were naked and unashamed. And that's so critical to understanding what sin has done to humanity. Because as soon as they realize they're naked, they grab fig leaves and they hide from God. And so picture this, God is walking in the cool of the garden, and it's his regular appointment to spend time with Adam and Eve and he can't find them. Now, we know God knows where they are. We know that God knows what happened. But God loves to ask questions to invite us to be honest and to invite us to recognize what God already knows about us. And so he calls out, where are you? And finally, they step out from hiding and they have this sense of shame that's just overwhelming going on with them. And God asked him a question. Who told you you were naked? And, and this is Adam's response. Listen to what he says. I heard you in the garden. And I was afraid. 
because I was naked and I hid. Uh, Think about that for a sec. Adam and Eve had never known fear. And now suddenly they experience fear for the first time. They had never known shame. And now shame is a part of their human experience. And because there are forefathers, it is part of our human experience. And then he says that he hid. For the first time, Adam and Eve feel guilt. Fear, shame, and guilt had never been a part of the human condition. It was never God's intent to, for that to be a part of the human condition. But now it is a part of every person's human condition. Fear, guilt, shame. And here's why this word redemption is so important. Because redemption means to buy back. That image of God, that Imago Dei that we were, humanity was created in, intended to live in the Imago Dei, it is broken, it is flawed, it's been marred, it's tainted, it's not what it was intended to be. But because of redemption, God has promised to restore that perfect Imago Dei. But nevertheless, He wants us today to live in that Imago Dei, to understand that that is how God sees us. He sees us not as we are, not as we ought to be, but He sees us as we will one day be. That's what it means to be in Christ. He sees Christ, perfection, when He looks at you and me. Now, let me tell you my favorite story that kind of helps me grasp what it means to be redeemed. Um, And it's a story I heard when I was a brand new Christian some 33 years ago. And it's it's an old story, and and, and this is how it goes. It's about a little boy who built a boat. And this little boy um, just absolutely loved this boat that he built. He'd go out in the backyard, and there was a creek that ran through the backyard, and so he would put it in the water and play with it and... And then one day, the creek was moving a little bit faster than normal, and it kind of got in one of those flows, and it, it just took off down the creek, and it went off of his property, and he was never able to catch up to it. He was crushed. He was so sad. But the following day, his mom took him into town, and as he walked by this one particular store, in the window, he saw his boat. And he lit up, and he went inside, and he told the store owner, that's my boat. Can I have my boat back? And the store owner said, absolutely, for $5. Well, this is back in the day when $5 was a lot of money for a little kid. And so he went home very sad. But his mom and dad gave him some opportunities to work in the house and to work in the yard to earn that $5 back. And so after he worked for a few days, he finally earned that $5. And man, he went as quick as he could into town. He went right to that store and he was so relieved that that boat was still there in the window and he walked inside and he laid down that five dollars and he said give me my boat and he grabbed that boat and as he walked out of the store this is what he said now I have loved you twice I made you and now I've bought you see that's what it means to be redeemed God made us he made us in the image but then we rebelled against him we dug our own pit we walked away from him We were lost, but we were purchased back, not with five dollars, not with gold or silver, but with the precious blood of Jesus. And so now, Christian, you are loved more than you can imagine. You are loved twice because God made you and he bought you. And so rest in that knowledge today. Let that truth sink into your soul and embed itself into your life. You have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Walk in that today. God bless you guys and may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. See you next time.